year, Girard's family hasn't heard from him for a week. They hope he's alive, but fear he's dead. An innocent victim, they say, in the 757 jet that crashed in Pennsylvania last Tuesday. What they can't accept is the very thing the FBI has suggested, that Ziad Girard was part of a conspiracy to murder thousands. The last time he called, uh, talking to his father as usual, laughing, making jokes on the phone. We are living on the hope that uh, our Ziad Girard is not the one who was on the plane. But you haven't heard from him? We haven't heard from him. Even at the height of the Lebanese civil war, the Sunni Muslim villages of Marj say their town escaped the influence of extremists, Hezbollah guerrillas and the Bekaa Valley's then famous drug trade. But now, after a decade of peace, one of the town's sons stands accused of the worst terror attack of all. The FBI lists Ziad Samir Jarrah as one of 19 hijackers, putting him on United Airlines Flight 93 from New Jersey last Tuesday. For the past two days, the Girard family has been receiving guests, not in mourning, they insist, believing it may still be that Ziad wasn't aboard the hijacked plane. They simply dismissed the suggestion that he was involved in the hijacking conspiracy. It's not the typical picture of it's someone... It's not the typical picture of a religious person. Or of a religious terrorist in this case. If he's not a religious person, then uh, he couldn't be in any way a religious terrorist. Certainly, Ziad Jarrah's background from his family's description suggests nothing sinister. From a well-off middle-class family with relatively liberal views, educated at Christian schools, pursuing a career in aviation at a German university and lately at a Miami flight school, he planned to marry. The family has railed at suggestions he was connected to other hijackers in Germany or in Miami, that he'd stopped paying his university fees or travelled to Afghanistan. Could Ziad fly a plane? No, I don't think so. Was he a religious extremist? No, no. He was leading a very, very normal life. Had he ever been to Afghanistan? No. Been suggested? No. The rumour of Afghanistan stick to Ziad just to complete the story. Ziad Jura's father sent him money just days ago. Perhaps he was planning to take a holiday in Los Angeles, it's suggested. But the family concedes he'd said nothing of any trip. Can you explain why he's flying from New Jersey? I have no explanation in the end. So fearful are the people of Maj that at many of the shops that carry the family name of Jarrah, we were accused of spying for potential American reprisal attacks. If there is an attack of American to Lebanon or something like that, they should be afraid of this. And uh, we all scared of this uh, something. Struggling with fear and confusion, the people of Marj say that the FBI has a lot left to do to convince them that Ziad Jarrah should be considered a suspect. He's no neat fit into any conspiracy puzzle with no clear motivation or any obvious ties to an identifiable organisation that Washington may want to strike with its anti-terrorist coalition. Veteran observer of Middle East politics Farid Khazan says while Ziad Jarrah's background differs greatly from the model of the terrorist of the past, this attack destroyed that model. There's nothing classical in all this. Most of these people lived in the US or in Western countries, had access to a good education, some of them. Some were pilots. Uh, I think uh, they were well-to-do people. They were well-off. They come from uh, well-off families. We're not talking about destitute, poor individuals. Dr. Hazan says the mystery over Ziad Jarrah shows how slowly the United States may be forced to move in response. The biggest question of all, he says, is the lack of any demand or claim of responsibility following the attack. The fact that you can have 19 people who are willing to die for a cause they believed in, but a cause that we as observers are un unable to identify and understand. And while the world and investigators struggle with that question of why, Maj in the Bekaa Valley waits to hear what happened to an only son with everything to live for.